now. Before we get started, here's a quick message from our sponsor. Atlas VPN is a service that provides users with online privacy, giving you your own virtual private network by using encryption to protect your personal data from being viewed by the wrong eyes. Atlas VPN has a dedicated system to combat malware and malicious ads on your devices and is compatible with most operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. It also features a data breach monitor which notifies users of any leaked information being exposed from your online accounts such as your usernames, emails, and passwords. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a massive discount and by using our link, get Atlas VPN slash Kendo Gun Shop, you can gain access to a three-year premium subscription plan at 82% off for only $1.99 a month. And if you aren't satisfied with their service, users will be eligible for a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're interested, make sure to check the description and pin comment. All the information has been linked down below. Now, let's get started. Welcome back, Joseph Kendo here. Let me introduce you to the high power, the single-action 9mm handgun issued to officers of the RPD before it was obtained by Claire Redfield during her treacherous escape from Raccoon City. While this particular model served in the RPD during 1998, its original design dates back to 1928 as a creation of the renowned firearms inventor, John Moses Browning, but it wasn't until after his death that this vision would finally become complete, built under the weapons manufacturer, Fabrique Nationale as the handgun to pioneer double-stack magazines capable of holding up to 13 rounds. Thus, it was formally named the High Power, given that it held about twice the limit of other sidearms at the time. The High Power had its very first appearance in Resident Evil 2, introducing us to our latest leading role of the series, Claire Redfield, as a university student and motorcycle enthusiast on a search for her lost brother, Chris Redfield. During the opening scene, Claire rides into town from the outskirts of Raccoon City in hopes of uncovering clues behind the mysterious disappearance of Chris. But upon her pit stop at Emmy's diner, suspicion is drawn from the vacancy of the town, only to discover she's not alone during her first encounter with a zombie. And without a weapon, Claire is forced to flee the building just before running into rookie police officer Leon S. Kennedy. Wait! Don't shoot! Get down! <laughs> The two then proceed to make their escape in a nearby patrol vehicle, evacuating the scene in hot pursuit. During the getaway, Leon asks Claire to check the glove compartment of the vehicle, revealing a service-issued handgun of the RPD for Claire to defend herself throughout the rest of her survival. Although soon after their separation, Claire is given no choice but to continue her search on foot, but now armed with a weapon for defense. At the start of the game, the weapon inside Claire's inventory is simply given the name Handgun, but upon examination, it reads, Browning HP, manufactured by FN Belgium. It uses 9mm parabellum rounds. This description serves as an accurate depiction of both its origins and caliber, along with the rendition that presents a later model of the high power, known as the Mark III. In use, it shares roughly the same performance as other handguns from classic titles, taking out zombies with around 5 to 9 shots, but with a capacity of 13 rounds respectively. But this is just enough firepower for Claire to safely clear her path through the city streets in order to reach the Raccoon City Police Department. During Claire's investigation of the RPD, she comes across a diary left behind from her brother Chris, although Chris is nowhere to be found. And the same can be said about attachments for her handgun, as there are no upgrades available for the high power anywhere in the game. As such, the high power is easily overshadowed by the other armaments, especially while being used in engagements with the more advanced BOWs. And as a result, you may find it's best to keep it stowed in the item chest for the later half of the game. But by following in the footsteps of Claire in her ongoing venture, we're given confirmation that this was one of the weapons she escaped with during her evacuation from Raccoon City. Set two months after the destruction of Raccoon City, Claire's high power made its brief return in Resident Evil Code Veronica, as Claire's investigation to find Chris continues, leading to her infiltration of the Umbrella Paris Research Facility with the high power still in hand. But after sounding the alarm and evading security, Claire finds herself cornered by an entire line of armed guards, and is left with no choice but to forfeit her will and her accompanied weapon.
only to successfully break free in a high-octane escape just before an immediate apprehension from Umbrella security officer, Rodrigo Juan Rival, to become the latest captive of Rockford Island Prison. Chances are, this was the same fate for her high power, as it would appear to have been confiscated during her arrest. From the start of the game, Claire begins with no weapon in her inventory, and her high power is never seen again. Instead, they decided to have a different handgun take its role as Claire's starting 9mm, making it clear to players that this would be the end of the road for the high power in Claire's journey. Set back to the events of the Raccoon City incident, Resident Evil Outbreak File 2 released, with the high power returning back to its previous role as the service-issued handgun of the Raccoon Police Department. When playing through the scenario Desperate Times, players are sent back to the RPD to help a group of surviving officers escape the confines of the police station. Upon exploration, the high power can be found scattered within the different regions of the RPD, and it stands as the only location in the game's story where the handgun can be found. Once obtained, you may notice that it's presented with wood grips and is modeled differently to depict an earlier version of the high power, known as the Mark I, but is still given the name Handgun HP, and its description reads, A handgun with high accuracy. It uses 9mm parabellum rounds. As far as accuracy goes, it doesn't appear to land shots any better than the other handguns, and its capacity falls short in comparison, with a limit of 13 rounds. And while it's not technically the strongest handgun in use, it is considered the most consistent 9mm of the game, given its ability to knock down foes at any distance with the same amount of shots. Released several years later as a spin-off title, the Dark Side Chronicles served to retell events of the Resident Evil saga, including the Raccoon City outbreak during the chapter, Memories of a Lost City. When playing as Claire Redfield, the high power takes its spot as her default handgun, although this time around it's introduced as her own personal weapon, rather than the gun she obtained in the RPD squad car. Once again, this model resembles a different configuration of high power, being depicted as the high power standard, which is characterized by its wood grips, target sight system, and a square front trigger guard that is completely unique to this model in-game. And in a similar fashion, this high power also returns as Claire's default weapon in the subsequent chapter, Game of Oblivion, which serves to retell the events of Code Veronica, but as if Claire hadn't lost the high power before her imprisonment. In use, it performs the same as the other handguns in the game, and as a rail shooter title, the high power can only be seen during its reload animation, or when playing as the partner in both of Claire's scenarios. And to our surprise, the high power was brought back in Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City as the accompanied sidearm of Claire Redfield once again. In game, she carries what appears to be a different configuration of the high power, recognized as the high power practical, although it does come with a well characterized description, which reads The handgun HP is a close range weapon that's one of the most popular semi automatic handguns in the world. Coming to its long awaited release in 2019, Resident Evil 2 Remake brought players back to the role of Claire Redfield. For this retelling, she rides into Raccoon City equipped with her own personal weapon, but it's not the high power this time around, although it still can be found in the game. To obtain the high power, Claire must explore the west wing of the RPD and make her way down to the department's indoor shooting range. Here, a tin box can be found with a car key placed inside. Even though the key appears broken, its remote function is not, and by activating the fob, an RPD patrol vehicle can be found inside the parking garage with the trunk unlocked, granting players access to a long-awaited reunion. Once obtained, this handgun is given the fictional name of JMB HP3, as reference to John Moses Browning, High Power Mark III, and its description reads, 13-shot 9mm handgun. First to use double stack magazines, it was a marvel of firepower at the time due to how many rounds it could hold. The model of the JMB HP3 appears as a faithful depiction to the design from the original game, as it carries over key features such as the spur hammer, dovetailed sights, and contour-styled polymer grips. Although unlike the real Mark III, this model lacks the external extractor and features a set of widened safeties, vertical slide serrations, and grips held by additional screws. And to top it off, it has an overall parkerized finish, as opposed to the black epoxy finish of the real-life weapon. 
As you may have noticed, the high power found by Claire is already equipped with a laser sight, which can be identified as the Beamshot 1000 that's activated by a pressure pad wired to the grip and is paired with its accompanied P-mount for its attachment to the trigger guard. While it starts with a standard magazine, a high capacity magazine can be found later in the game, and when equipped it now stands as the fully upgraded version to reign supreme over the high power's performance from the original game. In use, the high power serves as the superior 9mm handgun in Claire's arsenal, largely due to the abilities gained from the weapon parts available. The laser sight is equipped to the gun by default, but with it, the laser eliminates the need to focus the reticle while firing, along with emitting a beam to line up targets within the blink of an eye. In terms of ammo capacity, the high power is limited to hold 13 rounds, but if you've discovered the extended magazine through exploration, it will double its capacity to 26 rounds, along with Gran and Claire a sleight of hand to reduce reload time between magazines. When combined, the high power's increased precision, target acquisition, and extended magazine provide enough firepower to clear out numerous zombies within range. For many fans of the series, Resident Evil may have been the first to put this classic firearm into view, while for others there may have been no reason to remember the high power's numerous appearances, as it simply fits within the expectations of a standard handgun. But for the observant eye and memorable mind, one can recognize the high power's recurring appearance to be a detail that Capcom always took seriously enough to feature as the leading handgun of Claire Redfield in some variation or another. While other handguns would eventually take their role in Claire's survival, it was somewhat sad to see her part ways with her very first weapon, and we can only hope to see the high power return at some point in her journey moving forward. So, that's it for the High Power, the single action 9mm handgun to make its appearance as the first handgun for Claire Redfield. Be sure to check out our Kendo Gunshot merchandise. Our first two shirt and sticker designs are now available. You can find the link to the shop down below. If you'd like to help the Kendo Gun Shop expand its business past Raccoon City, share the video with your friends to help spread the word, or feel free to leave us a tip over at our Patreon, link in the description. Make sure to leave us a comment on what guns from the series you'd like to see a video on next, and don't forget to come back and visit us at the gun shop for more content about the firearms of Resident Evil.